Welcome to part 24 of a lecture on designing organic synthesis. Subject of today are classical Mannich reactions. For alkaloid synthesis. Well, you certainly know the Mannich reaction. However, it makes sense with that we again have a look what, what happens uh, there, since uh, it is uh, normally a three component reaction. You have an amino, an amine as one reaction component maybe a secondary amine, and in addition you have two carbonyl compounds that participate. One is the more reactive one for in terms of um, um, condensation with an amine, for instance an aldehyde, maybe benzaldehyde, for instance, and a ketone, for instance, acetophenone. So, and a Mannich reaction now, normally under acid catalysis, what will happen? Since the aldehyde has the higher carbonyl activity, the condensation reaction of the amine will preferentially take place at the aldehyde. So, under acid catalysis, plus a proton minus H2O, we will get the to the formation of an aluminium cation. On the other hand, under acid catalysis, ketoenol tautomerization will take place. And now we have the nucleophilic center here. So donator reactivity, acceptor reactivity for the electrophile here. Well, and CC bond formation will take place. And the overall outcome, outcome therefore, is than this product. So a one pot reaction, three component one pot reaction, which is called the Mannich reaction. Well, you can get to this product by an alternative pathway. For instance, make an aldol condensation with a base, catalyzed with base on a basic or acidic conditions, then the aldol condensation product is, of course, this alpha better unsaturated ketone, whereupon the conjugate addition reaction to the alpha beta unsaturated ketone will lead to the same final product. This is then a two-step process and here, as I said, a one-pot reaction. Very elegant, the Mannich reaction. 
So let's have a look at a very prominent example for a Mannich reaction. And uh, this example has something to do with uh, the synthesis of uh, atropine. Here's the structure of this famous alkaloid. So, racemic atropine. The racemic atropine is uh, uh, biologically very active. It is an ingredient, uh, or compound that is, uh, was originally found in uh, that nightshade plant, Atropa belladonna. And it's used as a medicinal drug for various uh, purposes. Um, <coughs> it is one of the essential medicines of uh, the WHO list. And uh, it is applied, for instance, uh, uh, as a heart medicine and also as an antidote against uh, some of the chemical weapons. Hopefully, we'll, we will never have to use that for that purpose. Well, okay. <coughs> so, making a retrosynthetic analysis of that atropine. The first step is fairly easy. I think every one of uh, you would uh, get the idea to cleave this strategic bond. Then we get to this acid. Which is indeed called tropic acid. And to the alcohol, which is called tropine. So, first of all, how could we synthesize tropic acid? Nice idea would be to cleave here. So, phenyl, phenyl acetic acid should be combined simply with formaldehyde. And indeed, choosing the right base, of course, at least two equivalents. Because first, deprotonation of the highly acidic acid proton, then the second deprotonation, alpha to the carbonyl group, then this is the nucleophilic center, and uh, well, this is some kind of aldol addition. So, and the base which has been applied that uh, worked just fine was isopropyl magnesium chloride. 
So, you might ask, how does that work? So, if you give isopropyl magnesium chloride to, alde to that aldehyde, well, you of course uh, uh, get the one two addition uh, product. So, the way to perform the reaction was they applied three equivalents of the isopropyl magnesium chloride. That was enough for deprotonating twice. But keep that at low temperature. Then you take paraform aldehyde and at temperatures above 200 degrees, then the polymer is uh, decomposes and sets free alda this uh, form aldehyde to the gas phase and with gases, this gas form aldehyde, you lead into the reaction flask. So, the first form aldehyde will of course react with the excess of the isopropyl magnesium chloride, but after a while uh, all is consumed and then the cheap form aldehyde will react as an electrophile, electrophile with the um <coughs> deprotonated acid enolate. So this reaction works quite well. 70% yield. Was uh, published uh, for, um, well, for a new procedure in uh, recent years where we have optimized uh, that. So, now we know how to get to the tropic acid. What about the tropine? So, we are talking about the Manish reaction. So, and what we are setting up is an amino group in better position of a carbonyl group. So here we have the alcohol, but for setting up the money reaction, we need the carbonyl there. So just let us transform that to the ketone. This is uh, then called or tropinone. And this tropinone was indeed a prominent target molecule at around 1900. And, uh, well, Robinson the one with the Robinson annihilation and so on synthesized this molecule in this group in uh, the year 1917 with applying the Mannich reaction well, as uh, in this case some kind of revolutionary example making a big impression what is possible in uh, uh, natural product synthesis because he could synthesize that from rather simple starting materials essentially as a one-pot reaction with very high yield. So, if we disconnect for the Mannich reaction, we can disconnect here and there Within the Mannich reaction, the CC bond starting between the alpha and the beta position from the carbonyl is formed and the CN bonds here. 
So, so cynic aldehyde, methylamine, and acetone should in principle be sufficient when treated at uh, with acidic conditions. Well, to my knowledge, this works, was one of the initial examples. However, they improved the synthesis We kept to the idea, stayed with the idea, using this aldehyde, of course, also the methylamine, but this acetone dicarboxylic acid proved to be superior than uh, uh, applied. And uh, in this case, as a one-step process, you get to this bicyclic ring system with these two acid functionalities still present. 94% yield, but if you heat that up, then, of course, two equivalents of carbon dioxide will be formed, since we have uh, twice the situation of better keto carboxylic acids. Well, okay. The last step should be uh, should work with, uh, well, almost quantitatively. So, really an impressive uh, achievement uh, by Robinson from the year 1917. Well, let's now have a look at uh, the synthesis of another alkaloid. less important, but uh, somehow an interesting structure, lycopodine. So, Yes, this is leucopodine. Well, I think uh, the first racemic, or one of the first racemic syntheses from uh, Clayton Hathcock in 1984. As I said, a racemic synthesis. Clayton Hathcock is well renowned also for looking for applications for Mannich reactions and Mannich type reactions. Well, okay, this was uh, one of his chosen target molecules. And um, as an exercise, please find out which are the bonds, where are those? Uh, bonds to be formed by a Mannich reaction. And if you find those, 
you will certainly notice that uh, then this uh, the next structure in retrosynthetic analysis will be far more simple. Okay, please have a try. So um, the <coughs> Uh, subject we were talking about was uh, finding the bonds, the bonds which could be set up by a Mannich reaction. So we should go back to um, <coughs> the retron concept you all know. We discussed cyclohexene, the cyclohexene moiety as the retron of the Diels Alder reaction. We had also the retron of an oxycope rearrangement. And now we are looking for the retron of a Mannich reaction. And this is simply a better amino carbonyl structure. So that means This moiety having an amino group, a three carbon chain, and the last one with a carbonyl group. This is the retron of a Mannich reaction. Let us have a look here. Do we find that? Here is the nitrogen, there is the carbonyl group, and these are the three carbons. So, for the Mannich reaction, then this bond and that bond have been formed. Retro Mannich means we have to cleave this one and that one. And that carbon here, there should be originally a carbonyl group there. Okay? So, but if we do so, cleave this bond, cleave that bond, then we have a macrocyclic structure. This is far more complicated than our initial structure. Therefore, we should look for a possibility to simplify that, that we don't have that macrocycle after, um, after our initial retrosynthetic synthetic consideration. So, first we want to simplify that. Well, maybe we can easily get rid of one of those cycles. And indeed, that should be possible. So, let us cleave this one, having a leaving group here. And let us cleave, in addition, this CC bond having a leaving group. Well, maybe then Y, X and Y two leaving groups. So, alkylation alpha to that carbonyl group and uh, alkylation alpha and amine here. Well, maybe this is the way to do it. So, and now, again, here, we have the retron of a Mannich reaction. Let us cleave these two positions. So, And this is that central position of a carbonyl group there. OK? So this looks relatively complicated. But what we should figure out that is that we have essentially a cyclohexanone moiety with one side chain, another side chain, and a methyl substituent. That's it. So let us translate that. OK. 
carbon dial here, nitrogen there. So here we have the methyl group. Then it's uh, in front of the blackboard. And here at this position, we should have that acetone moiety attached. This is indeed a simplification. So, we should uh, keep in mind that um <coughs> we should work with uh, some protective group chemistry in that uh, case. So what about this having a nitrogen functionality here? This should be an electrophilic center, this a nucleophilic center. Shouldn't be a problem in principle. One could think about forming this bond by a Michael-type addition process at acrylonitrile. Could be an idea, and uh, indeed that was what uh, we have COP uh, group did. So this now is some kind of principle outline. So let's have a look how we have COP group in reality, synthesized uh, uh, that uh, leukopodine as target molecule. So, they started with this rather simple cyclohexadione. And indeed, with acrylonitrile, basic uh, conditions, no problem. So, <coughs> next step transforming one of uh, those equal carbonyl groups in a functionality which we can get, well, not get rid of, but uh, we need uh, here um, a situation where we could uh, attack uh, with another nucleophile. So, well, anyway, wh what we did was, first of all, treat this one with oxalyl chloride. It turned out as the best way to get the transformation done to this Chloro substituted alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl group. All other ways, for instance, um, uh, using phosphooxychloride, were far less efficient. This reaction worked with a 72% yield. And then a reduction was achieved with zinc. In methanol, with 0.1% silver acetate as a catalyst,
getting in a very good yield to this alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So now next step is to find a solution how to get an acetone moiety attached there. You can't simply make um, uh, <coughs> a Michael addition reaction with uh, acetone. Maybe one could use acetic, acetoacetic acid ester and then hydrolyze the ester functionality decarboxylate should be possible. However, we made some tests and uh, decided uh, first step Sakurai reaction. You might know the Sakurai reaction that is a titanium induced Michael type addition reaction of an uh, allylic silane. So, Sakurai reaction. So, and um, <coughs> the stereochemical outcome should be this one. And this should be trans to the other one. Here you can, of course, equilibrate. <coughs> so, next step, then simply an ozonolysis. Okay. Overall yield of this combination, Sakurai reaction plus ozonolysis, was an uh, astonishing 90%. Okay, this explains uh, why we choose uh, uh, this procedure instead of that Michael type stuff we were already talking about. So, <coughs> let's have a look at a couple of steps more. Acetalization Secondly, reduction with lithium aluminum hydride. Okay, acetalization to protect those carbonyl groups. Lithium aluminum hydride react reduction of the cyano group will give the primary amine, of course. So, <coughs> well, <coughs> 
to get more close to this structure, we should turn that around. And this means, uh, well, that carbonyl group is there, here protected as an acetal. And um, here we have one, two, three carbons, one, two, three carbons, and the amino group after the reduction. Here is that methyl group, then the acetone side chain is in, well, better position to this side chain. Okay, this one. Right. Ah, sorry. We have protected that. Okay. So, <coughs> Havcock Group decided to make a shot as a proof of principle. Let's call that intermediate A. They treated intermediate A first with benzoyl chloride and you need an additional base triethylamine to uh, trap the uh, HCl which uh, will evolve forming a carboxylic acid amide to amino group and then again reducing with lithium aluminum hydride if you reduce a carboxylic acid amide with lithium aluminum hydride you remove the carbonyl group you reduce the carbonyl group and have simply an amine there okay that means as a result still having the acetals as protecting groups so one two three and here you have a benzyl group so why a benzyl group you can easily get rid of a benzyl group later on simply with hydrogenation with uh, palladium on charcoal, as you know. Again, this two-step procedure with a marvelous yield, 94%. And now the proof of principle 1.5 normal HCl in methanol, 25 degrees, 48 hours. So, what happens with um, under acidic reaction conditions? The bo both acetals will be cleaved. Aluminium cation formation here as the first step of the Mannich reaction. So aluminium cation here, and then that's this aluminium cation as an electrophile will attack at the enol you will have here as an intermediate. So and. Uh, This was obtained in a single preparative step from here 
to there with a 66% yield as proof of principle. So, Havcock decided then instead of cleaving here, or we would need to protect here for the reduction maybe, and then uh, cleaving that, and having then uh, well, nucleophilic substitution here and there to get that side chain, and maybe in addition some problems with the stereoselectivity at this position could all happen. Yeah? So, they decided to modify it a bit instead of having that benzyl group already a three carbon side chain there. So, and uh, this first step may uh, look a bit strange. Ah, okay. Let's draw the compound with which they started then. They started with a compound. They had before structure A, that means the nitrile. Instead of hydrolyzing this nitrile, uh, sorry, instead of reducing that nitrile, they hydrolyzed it with KOH in ethanol. As you know, acetals are perfectly stable under basic reaction conditions. They react under acidic reaction conditions. So, hydrolyzation worked nicely. in 87% yield. Well, you might ask, why did they choose that nitrile? Why not having an ester here? Instead of using uh, acrylonitrile in that initial step, getting that, uh, uh, getting to the uh, side chain, they could have used uh, acrylic acid ester. Well, yes, they could. I, I just assume that uh, they had that in large amounts and just decided, come on, let's uh, hydrolyze this one. 87% yeah. um, <coughs> So, next step, amide formation. With this amine, the alcohol protected with a benzyl group. Okay, so for forming an amide, you of course have to activate somehow this uh, acid functionality. Well, you could do that with. Um, <coughs> Well, um, this cyclohexyl carbodimid, for instance, yeah, this uh, standard uh, method we, we know from uh, Merrifield uh, uh, synthesis of uh, peptides. But another classical method is forming an anhydride.
forming an anhydride, a mixed anhydride with acid and with acid chloride, then you have, well, let's draw that here. <coughs> so, this carbonyl group is by conjugation more stabilized than that. Here you have the higher carbonyl activity, therefore the amino group will attack nucleophilic addition elimination process here. So this is that uh, classical um, anhydride activation uh, for the amide formation. So, and this also works very well. First amide formation, secondly Again, as we already have discussed, that lithium aluminum reduction or oh, this side. So, and we need three carbons. Then the oxygen and the benzyl group having still an acetal there. And to my knowledge, we had a mixture of diastereoisomers. So this wasn't defined. However, that Mannich type reaction is uh, an equilibrium reaction and uh, here at this position you can epimerize under the, under the acidic reaction conditions. It turned out that uh, uh, finally you get into the thermodynamic sink. Yeah. So, <coughs> well, <laughs> Next step, well, again, sorry, again, 87% yield, the same as before, this is uh, not a mistake, 87%. Then, the next step, well, the same reaction conditions as outlined here, One, once again, HCl in methanol and uh, so on. And uh, of course, this looks rather similar as the one before with the benzyl group here. Essentially, the same structure. You are already getting used to draw that. So. But now, we have this side chain and again a yield within the 60s in percent. Okay, so Let's have a look how they completed the synthesis. So next step, hydrogen, palladium on charcoal, but in acidic ethanolic solution with some HCl in there. Well, okay. Obviously, you don't need to protect that carbonyl group. It works rather nicely. Having already 
the alcohol functionality here, the carbonyl functionality here. Getting to this structure. So, how can we go on and get the right stereochemistry here? Well, 96% was isolated of this one. And the next step was an oxidation, a highly selective oxidation of uh, this hydroxyl group forming an aldehyde here. So, some oxidizing agents would cause problems. For instance, uh, with the tertiary amine here, it's also easily oxidized. I'm not sure would a tempo oxidation work in that case. Well, in uh, 1984, tempo oxidation wasn't known at all. So they used benzophenone potassium t butoxide combination. Benzophenone is reduced to the corresponding alcohol, where this alcohol is oxidized to the aldehyde. This is a special modification of a so-called Oppenauer oxidation, and this one is then called the Woodward modification of the Oppenauer oxidation. Okay? So I will write that down. Woodward modification of Oppenauer oxidation. Very moderate reaction conditions. Compatible, of course, with uh, tertiary amine. This wasn't isolated under these strongly basic reaction conditions. You, of course, can't isolate that aldehyde. The intramolecular aldol condensation will readily take place. Seventy two per cent So and now what is important and that's the reason why we set that up. How do we get to our final target molecule. Which indeed has this hydro hydroxyl group while arguable being on the exo phase. If this bond would have been formed by the initial idea of uh, nucleophilic substitution alpha to the carbonyl group, presumably that alkyl group would be exo. Then. But in this case, from here to there, it's 
just a hydrogenation again with palladium on car coal and uh, then the hydrogen will approach that olefin from the exo phase, at least the sterical less hindered phase opposite to this bridge here. Okay. So and this works just fine in ethanol with an eighty seven percent yield. Well, nevertheless, we shouldn't finish today's uh, lesson without another interesting synthesis of the same target molecule, but now a modern synthesis from uh, Rick Carter's group. Carter in 2008 with the first Enantio selective synthesis of, uh, well, leukopodine. So, he had to decide how to introduce the chiral information and he decided to do that um, with a chiral auxiliary. It's this one. I think you have seen that before. This one. So, what is the structure of the chiral pool with which you start? That is comfort. This one. And uh, there is some strange miracle type transformation um, reminding us of uh, those alchemists where you indeed can introduce a sulfonic acid group here at this position involving some rearrangements. This is not simple CH activation here at that uh, uh, muffle group. It's rather complicated, that stuff. But um, um, there is an organic synthesis procedure for that transformation, getting the sulfonic acid functionality here. It's then called comfort sulfonic acid, a chiral sulfonic acid. So, if you form then the sulfonic acid amide, imine formation and then reduction, you end up with this one and uh, this is uh, called, it's, a it's the camphor sulf sultame. Introduced by, I think it was also Swiss chemist, Oppolzer. And this is similarly used as uh, Evans enolate chemistry in the same context. So, what can be done now is getting this 
azul group attached and a cuprate addition, well, allyl magnesium bromide with copper bromide and lithium chloride. And secondly, an alcoholysis of uh, this amide bond with methanol and magnesium methanolate So, what happens? Cuprate conjugate addition reaction in that chiral environment, transforming that to the ester then. gave 85% yield of this compound with uh, that chiral center. Enantioselectivity, uh, well, at 98% or so, okay? A lot of chemistry to get this small, medium-sized uh, uh, compound, but the enantioselectivity selectivity is, is uh, the crucial point. So, <coughs> we were in need of a second component. This 1,4-dibromobutane was first treated with this compound So, if you have here an acid functionality in OH group, then it is the phenyl sulfinic acid. It's an acid, it's acidic. So, you can exchange and um, <coughs> the, the, the sodium here, then you have the sodium phenyl sulfinite. So, this is sodium phenyl Sulfinite. And what's interesting of such a sulfinite, this is a nice nucleophile, but reacting with the sulfur as the nucleophilic center. What you get is then sulfones. So, Initially, we have a bromide here, but the second step with sodium azide, we introduced this acido functionality there. We need that later on for the, that nitrogen, yeah, of course. So, um, well, through those two steps, 47% of that was obtained. Next step, call that within this synthesis A 
this B A plus B under basic conditions, simple base, you have then here the acidic proton, the protonating here, more acidic than alpha 2, that ester functionality. Then this is the nucleophilic center, this is, so this is the donator center, this is the acceptor center, and uh, Therefore, the combination will lead to this result. So again, let's count the carbons. If we don't make a mistake, here is already something wrong, I guess. Yeah. So, what do we have here? One, two, three, four centers. So, let's stay with one, two, three, four carbons here. Later on, we will see is this correct or not. Okay. So, but I think so. Okay, so yield of this simple step seventy four percent. Next step, a very modern one, not known at the first uh, synthesis uh, at the times of uh, Hefcock in the late eighties but uh, hopefully known to every one of you, the olefin metathesis. Okay. So, and interestingly, there is not only the cyclizing olefin metathesis, which is very well known, um, meanwhile, they have developed reaction conditions where you can um, achieve an intermolecular cross-metathesis. So, they used this as the second olefin component to achieve the transformation Propene will involve, and uh, they used the so-called a so-called second generation grubbs hoveda catalyst. So, what is the structure? This carbene ligand, mesityl groups here. Well, as you know, ruthenium catalyst is the preferred one for olefin metathesis. Okay, this is the catalyst, and you need 5% of 
that. Well, unfortunately, that, that is a lot for such an expensive and uh, uh, complicated structure. So, nevertheless, the yield, okay, moderate, 63%. Moderate yield, but a modern method. So, next step, treating it with a base So what will happen with the base? Well, this is, well, basic chemistry. <laughs> Deprotonating here, because this is double activated, the sulfon group and the carbonyl group, and, uh, well, conjugate addition reaction, Michael addition, it's an intramolecular Michael addition reaction here. All influenced of course, by this center for the stereo control of a reaction. Now we, you will see we are already getting close to the target, or more close to the target. So, those one, two, three, four carbons are correct. Here are those still one, two, three, four. Eighty nine percent. Next step. Well, preparing for the Mannich type reaction, but not uh, as a one-step process, but two steps. So, with they introduced um, an Enol silyl ether tetrabutyl dimethyl silyl enol ether here. On the other hand, our cellulation the um, with a phosphine, you can cleave that one phosphine, triphenylphosphine in THF. A um, bit of water in there, and uh, you get triphenylphosphine oxide, and nitrogen evolves, and you have the amino group there, and it will condensate already. Yes, this intermediate has been isolated with an 82% yield. So, now you have here that immune, immune functionality, there you have the nucleophilic center, you have to increase the electrophilicity of this amine, simply by applying a Lewis acid 
Lewis acid was zinc triflate. So, then we are again at this stage 54% well and for the last steps what did they do they applied this iodo propanol An alkylation having that propyl side chain with the alcohol functionality and the final steps then were the same as we have already seen in uh, um, uh, Clayton Hathcock's synthesis with that Woodward <laughs> Woodward modification of the uh, Oppenauer oxidation. Yeah. I had to be careful that I don't uh, uh, say Oppolzer. Oppolzer. Yeah. So it's the Oppenauer oxidation and again condensation and hydrogenation. So same as already seen before and these last step took another 57 percent. Well I think because uh, that Mannich type process was not a one pot reaction as uh, we have seen it uh, with Hefcox, this is less impressive. Nevertheless, it's the first enantio selective uh, synthesis of uh, leucopodine. So, subject for tomorrow also will be Mannich type reactions, Mannich uh, reactions with some additional very powerful transformations. We will call that magic uh, Mannich well, with reference uh, to uh, a lecture given from uh, Clayton Hathcock uh, 30 years uh, before and you will see that uh, magic money is uh, indeed uh, justified for the synthesis we will see tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks for listening. See you tomorrow. <laughs>